Need to wait for them to get their organization back again, and then we can throw them into the fray. Oh dear, they're sending in more and more troops for reserves. They're throwing everything they have at us here. Unfortunately, combat with is only 40. Well, oh, the minimum was 80. No, the minimum is 40. I don't know why it fluctuates between 40 and 60. I've seen that happen before. Weird. Don't like it. Yeah. What we could do is do this and then plan against Germany without actually meaning to get a... We're not actually going to attack them. But the reason we're doing this is for the planning bonus. Okay, you're going to attack me across the strait. That's fine. That's going to reduce your ability to attack. Plus, I have tons of infantry now, so we're great at defending. But this allows us to get planning bonus. So we're going to grab the marines. And attack you. Maybe only two of you. busy. Don't let them recover organization, that's the main thing here. I can't get in here, that's the problem. Because of the really weird way that access through the strait works. Because I don't have access to the strait, I cannot access any of the Baltic, even this area. Although actually there is one thing I can do, is I can manually move them. Rather than defending that area, I could, I think, do this. So cancel your current orders and just move... No, I literally cannot move into the Baltic area at all. I do not like that straight moving thing. It's just... It's... It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. No, I don't. Because I haven't taken the straights. <laughs> oh. You. Attack. You too. Support. This is getting silly. Send in the tax. Tanks, Mark II. Like, they're all losing organization. They don't do like humans where they recycle very well. And now this is going to allow my Marines to get a uh, planning bonus, which means that we can hit them much harder overall. There's the medium SP artillery twos. So let's just quickly go to production and see if this was right. Show outdated. Medium SP 2. Convert. There we go. Convert from stockpile. So it's much cheaper. It doesn't cost as much tungsten or steel. We build them twice as fast and we're converting my old medium tanks into the tier above uh, SP artillery. Now once we have a couple of those, I'm hoping that we can upgrade them further. So let's have just half of you working on that, half of you, yeah, that's, that's good. Right, now that we have that, can we then go to SP3? Currently no equipment in stock that we could use to convert. So no, the SP2 is as high as we can go. Oh well. Oh, we're about, almost over. We're over. Right, we're in Odin's, eh? Ah, you're coming over here. Um, that's alright, actually. Now we can keep you busy. <laughs> this offensive just got a lot easier. And once we're across, which we now are, um, GG Denmark. Yes, 
your offensive defeated. Our one's coming in. We'll grab this tank to go this way. And then the rest can go towards Copenhagen. Marvellous! There's the research time reduction. Excellent. Let's get another decryption so I can always see what the enemies are trying to throw at me. And also more research. Um, let's go for experimental rocket so we can start going towards jets, although... No, there must be other technologies we need more. Artillery for a start. Yeah, and the really annoying thing about the straits is they work differently. So, like, the straits of Gibraltar, you can pass through there. No, sorry, not Gibraltar. What's a good example? Um, this strait, whatever that one's called. Black Sea. Bosphorus. Like, you can never cross if either of the things is held by anyone that's not you. Then the... Panama, I think you can cross so long as you're not at war with them. Then uh, Baltic, you can cross so long as you're not at war with them. Ah, uh, no, terrible system. I actually eventually lost 8,000 men fighting them. We, we, we did lose our, our backup. Oh, it's because of the Marines. Right, when the mechanized were coming across the strait, they didn't have a problem. But when the marines go across the strait, the ones who are actually meant to be doing that, they all died. And Bharatiya just took out India. That's interesting. You're going to have to worry about Gandhi with nukes soon. Come on, Copenhagen. Fall. Fall! And squish. And squish. Oh yeah. I want all of their things to belong to me. Marvellous. 46,000 equipment. Lovely. Okay, so I think the next justification will be against Sweden. Then we can use Sweden to attack Norway. And we did get a couple more factories, which we can have making modern tanks. Yeah. Cool. And we got some manpower. The next thing I wanted to do was release Denmark. Like so. Denmark's back. Then, if we go in here, click on that. Kingdom of Denmark. I want to have a look at your... None of them. Alright, so let's have a look at your infantry type 8. Close enough. We're going to say... Duplicate? Aha. New division. Danish Vikings. They're going to have the... Battle axe. And these are all going to be marines. Hang on. Remove that. Remove that. Infantry. Marines. 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 I think those are artillery, right? Marines. Marines, artillery, artillery, Marines. Oh man, I can't remove the ATs. That's annoying. And replace you with field hospitals because you're also going to have manpower issues. Combat with the 26, it's. Mm, no, we'll, we'll, we'll drop you to. 20, and we will add recon so you have a bit of a better chance of actually attacking stuff. That will do for the moment, and we can fill you out further later. 
And then the Danish Vikings. Oh, they're already in my list. So, why don't I do the division designer? No, it has to be selected from there. Okay, cool. We can train a couple of those. Fifty-six thousand manpower. Twenty-four thousand manpower. With extensive conscription, that's still a hell of a lot more than me. And you probably just started training some units, actually. What are we lacking here? Manpower. Oh, my manpower too. We'll start ten of those divisions training. Um, I'm going to need to get my own manpower problem solved, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Right. You two. New army. Train. You guys, his army, you guys. Uh, right, I'm going to be a bit cheaty about this. We're going to put you on the southern border against Germany. I'm not actually going to attack Germany. This is just so you can build up planning. Meanwhile, actual naval persons are going to go from Copenhagen? I'm going to go from Copenhagen, and you're going to attack straight into Stockholm. Furthermore, the Fenris fleet should, seeing as I bloody well own it now, be able to get into the Baltic. Excellent! I did puppet Denmark, yes. And there we go! Right, you lot should be blue. And, whoops, your crest. There is only one crest that one. Make you slightly lighter. That'll do. It's still kind of hard to see. Now we'll just make it dark blue. Cool. So you guys, once you've arrived, should start getting planning bonuses against Germany. But that holds over. So when we start attacking Sweden, even if we don't have a plan in place, you will still get the planning bonus bonus. Which is why I love Grand Battle Plan, because you can get these massive bonuses and then just attack anything with it. You don't necessarily need to use the the plans. You just need to be basically doing exercises against someone so your people are used to fighting uh, with each other. Right, People's Army. Once you have that, we're one, two focuses away. How long do they take? 70 days. 70 days, so we're 140 days away from getting Danish Vikings in the army. But that's fine. And they still have 24,000 manpower. And then I probably will get Swedish Vikings and Norwegian Vikings. And there we go, People's Army. Let's grab Patriotic Movement. Now that we've decided to adapt our War of Independence tactics to the modern day, we should promote a campaign comparing the modern army to the flying columns that we pioneered these tactics to in invigorate a sense of national pride in our people. Air Force. Yeah, I'm working in the Air Force. Uh, no I'm not, because I decided to research something else. I need to, though. Put a member of the Shadow Realm to do Denmark, probably. He's a Shadow Viking. Paul Lovenbalk, the Shadow Viking. It's fine. The, the Authoritarian Democrat A Party. Okay, so you're getting your full planning bonus now, which is 50%. So that's basically a 50% bonus to attacking stuff. Preparation goes up by 3.4% a day. So you can do lots of little attacks with them. I much prefer one big one. But alright. Is doing okay there. We are really short on oil. Oh, it's because you've stopped selling me everything. Tisk, tisk, tisk. 
I'll buy some more from your rival. And also steel. Same thing. Can you stop not selling me stuff? I, I bailed you out of that war. I'll buy it from Germany. Some of it. Oh, we were actually ahead. Never mind. We don't need it. Plus, I can still do the uh, extraction technologies, which I haven't yet. Cool. Right, let's move my air forces to there, there. I do like the animation of the airplanes flying in. Actually, you can go to Copenhagen and you'll be even closer. Let's do that. So the naval bombers, I want you active in the Baltic. The fighters, I want you active over southern Sweden. And then I think I might actually get another 200 wing of fighters. What? Might that not work? Oh, manpower. Right. Yeah, that is a problem. Okay, F Field Hospital 3. Excellent. Planes. Interwar bombers. <laughs> Can't believe we haven't even had interwar bombers until this point. It's redonkulous. Alright, so how long until we can actually declare war on the Swedes? Several months. Disappointed. How does Ireland rate in your list of nations, fun nations to play? I love the flavour Ireland has, and I love the ridiculous bonuses that they get as a national spirit. That said, they're a bit slow-paced, for me personally. I mean, once you've taken Britain, I'm not in a faction, there's not really much going on. There are better ones. It's not as bad as the French Republic. I... They're probably mid-tier. Mid-lower tier. Like, the ones I would rate as, like, number one would be Germany, would be Russia. Japan would be low first tier. Um, French Republic is probably the example that you would set for ones which are really boring. Brazil, similarly, it takes a long time to get into the war, but once you're in, it's a lot of fun to play as Brazil. USA was good. I enjoyed the USA. Best Kaiserreich nation? Germany. I really enjoy Germany. Or Russia. It, Russia has slightly more stuff going on right now, because I think Germany is going to get an overhaul. So actually, probably Russia would just about tip Germany, but Germany is close. I need to play as Austria one of these days. I have a feeling that Austria is going to be kind of like how Germany should be, if that makes sense. Right, we're December 43. We're really close to getting the next tier. So I'm just going to wait a little while. Uh, we will, however, start upgrading to tier 2s. I was playing Canada earlier, actually, in the multiplayer game. So yes, I've done Canada. Worst? Really? The Ottomans? No, the Ottomans are actually one of the best. Go watch my uh, Ottoman playthrough. It's a lot of fun. And, for a little bit of posterity, you can find that Ottoman playthrough here at youtube.com slash MordredViking. The Ottomans are really good, because the, uh, not the last update, which was the Death of Dishonor upgrade. No, I did, did, what, what? Oh, bollocks, I did. Ha! Yes, yeah, because they switch around, I hate that system. Tier 2. Terrible system. Well spotted. I would have missed that. Especially to basic infantry equipment. Still does handle. So Ottomans, yeah. It wasn't the uh, last update, which was the uh, Death of Dishonor update. It was the one before that. The Ottomans were like the feature piece. and They have a really, really good play now. I can't show you because they died. Um, but they have a pretty cool focus tree and their event, their event chains are really, really good. So in terms of like flavour, the Ottomans are way up there. No, I did not mean to do that. Oh well, it's only a 66 day one. It's fine. How 
And actually, now that we have all the uh, national spirits and things for Britain, we can punch way above our weight for what we have. Manpower is still slightly of an issue, but we're not far off of fixing that issue as well. Now we're getting puppets. We can use the ridiculous uh, Irish industry to boost that. So, uh, yeah, maybe. Once we actually get into the fight again, then maybe my opinion of... Um, the Irish will improve. Now that we've decided to... No, I've read that. Army Comrades Association. Our government has been approached by an organisation calling themselves the Army Comrades Association, whom our Tesek Ian O'Duffy is closely associated with. They're offering to help supplement our security forces in dealing with any potential opposition to the government of the Irish state. Lose national unity, gain recruitable population. And still December. We have enough political power for the next thing. We could get an intel guy. Oh, actually, industrial. Hello. Decryption and research time. Actually, I want a authoritarian Democrat. Strategic bombing and supply consumption reduction. Or plus one decryption and political power. Actually, he's pretty good. Sean McCohen. Or we can get the capital ship, which I don't think we necessarily need. Or we could get the aircraft one. Air superiority, attack plus three, interception plus... That's quite good. Radar station construction speed. Not tempting, actually. Or we could start to get some of the school of psychologies for the organization recovery rate. I'm actually going to go for the uh, political specialist. Decryption and power gain. Yeah, they should definitely have added a focus to start your own faction. Actually, speaking of that, do I have my own faction? No. No faction. Despite my puppets, I have no faction. Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day. CSA has declared war on Mexico. Um, oh, you can get across there. Wait, Dominion of India was annexed by nobody. I think that was just the official end of the Baratia War. Um, you can literally just get across here. Considering I'm not at war with anyone, I'm really tempted to send Mexico my tanks. But I have a feeling Mexico can hold that one province. Hey, hiya. Hiya, hiya. Hey, bussy. Ooh, we have stuff. Right, synthetic refineries. Okay, there were loads of places I didn't have a synthetic refinery yet. Let's build all the things in all the places. And this will hopefully deal with my oil situation Forever and ever and ever. Decryption is complete. Excellent. And now it is 1944, which means... 44 aircraft. And... I really should get jet engines. Experimental rockets. And M5 half tracks. Tier 3 mechanized. Moscow's about to fall. Mm, they're definitely being pushed back now. What are the Japanese doing? Not a huge amount. Oh, Feng Tiang's attacking reorganized China. Interesting. There's the interwar bomber. Let's get the tactical bomber one. What does encryption do? Encryption means that the enemy can't see the numbers of troops you have. Decryption means you can see what the enemy has, and encryption and decryption cancel each other out. Um, furthermore, when you're doing battle tactics, if you have good decryption, then your tactics are more likely to counter their tactics, and if you have good decryption, then you're more likely to... It, it factors into the tactics, so your generals will be more effective on the battlefield, and you, as the godlike commander. Instead of seeing these question marks, we'll see more of how many troops exactly they have. Also, when you click on a country's overview for the details, 
this is more accurate if you have good decryption versus their encryption. So the fact that my political specialist has plus one decryption means that I'm one tier ahead of their maximum encryption. So it should mean I always get at least some kind of information. And encryption counters that. Industrial strategy. Uh, we're still... I don't think we need any of those. We're fine. And now we're starting to get a little bit of manpower. So we've started to train some troops. The Danish Vikings. They're, they're getting ready. Yeah, I could send uh, volunteers to Mexico. The problem is I am currently justifying a war against Sweden. So they would probably get there and then head straight back home again. Because as soon as you go to war, your volunteers leave. Radio towers. Yeah, radio... Radar, you mean. Radar is good because it allows you to shoot down more of the enemy planes. So if you're having problems with bombers, for example, you're more likely to find the bombers and shoot them down with your fighters. But you need to make sure you have enough fighters to do that because they're also going to be engaging your fighters more often. So you're going to be suffering more casualties. But so are they. And generally, if your radar are protecting your own areas, then it's in your home zones. So you have less of a penalty than they probably have. That was actually very well timed. Get my immigration bonus just before declaring war. Nice. My not being at a war immigration bonus. Which should also mean that, yeah, all the things are now training. Except there are a bunch of Danes who have not shown up for duty. A whole bunch of Danes, in fact. So, oi, Denmark, change your manpower law. So I don't need to. I love that you can see this now. So helpful. So helpful. They've trained 11 divisions already. Blimey. Radar and AA stations are pretty effective versus enemy air. I hadn't really considered it with AA as well. Interesting. Did I ever build AA? Uh, no, not really. Wait, yes I did. Built it in the whole of Ireland, didn't I? Yeah, good luck getting into Ireland with aircraft. <laughs> When did I say this was? March. Yes. 3rd of March. You guys must be done training. What? Really? Oh, and you'll still need training. Fine. 7,000 artillery, 113,000 infantry equipment, 9,000 mechanized, 5,000 motorized, 10,000 support. 5.6 thousand medium tanks, 300 medium SPs. Uh, actually, what I... No, no manpower. I could increase these to size 40s, so they really punch through stuff, but we're not quite strong enough yet. I quite often max out radar playing as Britain. It's very useful. Because then, once you have the higher level of radar, you can start seeing into enemy territory, and then you can really start shooting them down too. And so long as your air production is better than theirs, then it's all good. And then your own bombers, once you've dealt with their fighters, your own bombers can bomb with impunity. So Russia is losing a war, because Moscow is definitely being threatened, so the best thing to do about that is attack Persia. In fact, what they've probably done is moved a whole bunch of troops down here for the invasion of Persia, which is why they're losing territory up here. Although they're holding the Crimea and pushing back in the Crimea. Yeah, I agree. I like radar. I definitely do like radar. Oh, that's true. We have 1944 ships as well. I need to upgrade those. Fenris fleet is looking more and more boss. Actually, I should probably base you out of Copenhagen for the short term.